I'm Doug McKenzie, and welcome to another episode of The Fintech Show. This week, we're lifting the curtain on digital banking in 2018 and beyond. Helping banks make the most of their digital transformation is five degrees. We chat to them about their solutions and their approach to collaboration with incumbents like Guarantee Bank. We also get insights from Van Land Schott about the future of private banking. Firstly, I sat down with Martin Holman, CEO of Five Degrees, to talk about the challenges banks are facing when keeping up with the pace of innovation. What are some of the biggest challenges facing the financial institutions currently? Well, I think uh, after the global financial crisis, uh, banks have been looking at their balance sheets for quite a long time to, to become healthy again from a financial point of view. I think uh, today, banks realize that technology has advanced so much that they cannot keep up with the agility and the speed of, of, of technology in, in, in today's world. And if they do not change and, and, and digitally transform, um, I think they will be outcompeted. Five Degrees has a digital banking platform that helps banks to, um, to, to adjust to any new trend uh, to help the best customer experience for the clients at the lowest cost possible. So what can moving to a digital banking platform afford some of the, the institutions out there? Well, I think you should realize that today's banks need to be open. And it's so hard to be open on one side and extremely secure on the other side. If you have technology of last decades, uh, that's a hard game to play. So first of all, I think it's important that banks stay uh, reliable and secure and in the same way be open to all new technologies that they can use to enhance the customer experience, to enhance uh, uh, more efficiency in the bank and to live up to the latest uh, regulations that banks are being forced on. First of all, you need modern technology. But modern technology is not everything. You also need the vision, you need to have the culture and the drive to become the best for your customer. So we only build, deliver the most important building block to actually get started, but then the banks still have to be passionate about their long-term vision as well. And what we can do is make sure that any idea that they have, what type of value proposition they want to bring to their end customers, that we can support that uh, in a matter of days and weeks instead of months and years. And I think um, bringing that to our customers helps them the best to become the banking champions again that they might used to be. Next, David Versteeg from Van Lens Schott Bank explained the importance of adaptation and innovation in the industry currently. Does the digital age and having a core digital system actually help you innovate and maybe stay adaptable in the future? Oh, it's a tremendous help. Uh, we decided to uh, build our digital channels from the ground up using uh, cloud technology and taking a mobile and API first perspective. Um, and also we introduced an uh, agile way of working uh, and actually uh, insourced uh, a lot of the front-end development uh, right here. Uh, and that allows us to actually uh, be very fast and flexible in introducing improvements but also innovations, including using uh, third-party services. Previously where we had to rely on uh, third-party vendors uh, using legacy systems, I mean this was impossible to think of. How have innovations at your front-end actually helped your customers along their journey? Well, I think uh, on uh, numerous uh, occasions, uh, but the, the most important one, I think, is in our investments app. Uh, given the fact that we uh, use a mobile-first approach and that investments is, of course, core to our offering. I sat down with Garanti Bank's Marco Verteven to talk about opportunities and collaboration. So what are some of the opportunities now presenting themselves in the financial industry? The new opportunities is finding new business models where a bank can uh, compete but also innovate by using those new business models. Easier ways to do payments. I think in Holland we are quite well advanced already in the payments area, but I think it can be much easier. There are now small things invented, uh, what we call in Holland, Eben Emro has invented the Tiki, where you can easily basically uh, do a payment. You pay in a restaurant and then you say, okay, I send a Tiki to you and then you have to pay me again. And that's just by an app, uh, very easy and so you basically, one is paying in the restaurant and everyone is paying you back uh, when they like uh, later on. Makes it all much easier. Small things, but that is attractive. People think that is very simple and that is not innovation. I think it is because the end user, they all talk about it in the streets. So it's simple and that's what basically the end user will look for and uh, that banks will provide more and more. The one click banking. So can you tell us about your work with Five Degrees? Garantie Bank has two business models. One, of course, is the, the corporate model. On our asset side, we are doing corporate loans and trade and commodity finance. 
and structured finance. On the other side, our funding is based on uh, partly, of course, uh, the interbank market, but also on the retail savings market. And for the retail savings market, you have to be fully digitalized. And therefore, we use uh, five degrees uh, in order to digitalize our complete onboarding process of the client, but also our day-to-day -day communication with the client is fully automated with five degrees. And five degrees at the end then interacts with our back office system where we then record uh, the balances of, uh, of the savings accounts and do all the payments. So let's take a closer look at five degrees' approach to onboarding, which they've already implemented with Vanland Shot. So how does using five degrees moving to a digital bank really help some of the institutions with their onboarding customer journey? Because I think for banks that come from the old world, that wants to transform to a, to a digital era, they have to look in horizons. So the first horizon is actually to come at par with the new normal, which is automated onboardings, efficient processes, um, being extremely in control over all the steps and activities that are happening in your bank. And that's what we support in the first horizon. So one of our clients, for instance, Van Lanschot, they, they, they came from a landscape with so many different systems connected to so many different other systems that it was kind of the, the, the famous spaghetti ball. And we helped them to structure all that, 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 that IT landscape. And they have Matrix as the orchestrating hub now between the channels and their product systems, uh, being in control of all their data. And the first thing that we needed to do is make sure that we bring back onboarding times of weeks to hours or, or minutes, yeah? And in a controlled manner because you really want to make sure that all your clients, that you really know who they are, the KYC. But in terms of private banks, it goes a little bit further because you have multiple entity structures, like corporate entities involved, many people involved, many persons involved, and the customer due diligence is a little bit more advanced compared to a traditional retail bank. So we have supported that first. Now, with this system in place, they are working on their digital experience, which is much simpler because we can, can basically offer all APIs for any type of activity that they want to bring online via apps or portals and they're doing that as we speak and to my best knowledge they have become the most modern private bank in the Netherlands and maybe a little bit further as well. The second stage what we think is that this allows Valanschot to go to more different business models and different earnings models. So now they have this digital banking platform they can actually consider to connect other products and services that they don't really want to own but they do want to deliver that to their end customers uh, without any heavy cost of having a certain products that they, they don't have the skill for. And, and they can support their clients with all other kind of bookkeeping service, accounting service and all these kind of things as well. And that runs all through our digital banking platform. Uh, that's actually very interesting to hear about, yeah, obviously the differences between retail banking and private banking, obviously when onboarding, yeah. the difficulty must be uh, almost absurd. So and if, if, if you have that scattered around over different systems, you actually have to type over or, or all these kind of things. It's very error prone at the end of the day. And uh, we control that whole process. So basically our engine says, okay, we go to that system to get that information or to push that information. And when we've done that, we have a green check and we go to the next one. And it becomes kind of a mathematical thing, which is extremely consistent and never goes wrong. Um, so uh, I think they're quite happy with that. Nowadays you have all sorts of technologies that uh, facilitate the process and make it uh, easier. Um, having said that, I don't think that uh, in the near future uh, wealth management prospects are willing to have a fully digital onboarding process. Uh, I think they still want to have a one-to-one -one or at least a, a conversation with a banker or at least to look someone into, in the eye. Having said that, we are developing uh, different steps in the onboarding process uh, to facilitate it uh, because that can still be done. But I think that the full onboarding flow is more relevant for robo-advisors. And actually, uh, within AV van Lanschot, uh, our service offering for self-directed clients, we do offer a fully online onboarding. What has upgrading to a digital core system really meant for Guarantee Bank? I think in Guarantee Bank, uh, of course, we are moving from a kind of paper-based working, which is not possible anymore in this world because the whole new world in banking is going around data, data and data. So you have to collect for, in order to comply with regulatory kind of compliance, we have to collect more and more data. We have to know more about our clients. We have to know more about the transactions they do. We are now the gatekeepers of the any money laundering and terrorist financing, etc. So 
the role of the bank as gatekeeper is changing. Therefore, we have to collect more and more data, as I said, and that's why the only way you can do it is to fully digitalize your operations. So everything that goes through the bank should be in a digitalized format. And therefore, I think we embarked on a digitalization here to have all those elements uh, digitally stored, but also to do analysis, more trend analysis, big data, on that data in order to take the right conclusions and be able to follow this kind of gatekeeper role that we have now assigned to by, uh, by the financial system. So obviously it's helped your security out, but what does it mean for the end user for the banks? Two things, positive, negative. I think positive, they can be sure that the bank is doing and is the, is the gatekeeper and is keeping everything secure and is a trusted party and more and more. Uh, although, of course, there were some articles in the newspaper last week that not all banks are fulfilling that role properly, uh, in, in, even in Europe, which, where you don't expect that. But the, on the negative side is, to become a client of the bank, definitely to become a corporate client of the bank, you have to share so much information between yourself and the bank that to become a client is not fun anymore. <laughs> it is really, really struggling to collect all the data, answering all the questions, your source of wealth, why are you banking with this bank, what products are you doing, which geographies, whatever, so much ask. Um, but we also have to record it and every regulation adds more and more data that we have to uh, do. Sometimes I ask the question who is looking at all that data at the end. So that's a negative point and as I said the positive point is I think banks are trustworthy institutions. Sometimes people associate digital with a removal of the human element. Obviously that's quite important with private banking. So how does Five Degrees really mitigate those differences? Well, I think once you talk to a private banker, uh, he, he, he embraces digital because that gives him more time to actually focus on the client. Um, the biggest frustration that you will hear with bankers is that the middle office is not working, the back office is not working, that he's only solving problems of clients instead of being with clients on their future and think about their dreams uh, and make sure that he, he realizes that with true advice. And, and I think that, that role uh, will never go. Um, but still, the, the, the factor of digital in, in, in being the best advisor to you, um, that's not even competing. Finally, our interviewees gave us their plans and predictions for the future. So where do you see the future of private banking? I think the wealth manager of the future is an omnichannel one. A personal touch supported with digital technology. The key element is and will remain really understanding uh, your customer, what motivates and challenges uh, him or her, uh, and adapting your services accordingly. Obviously, technology can be a big help in this, uh, including use of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, for instance. We see our bankers as guides uh, helping our clients to lead a rewarding life. Wealth management in the broadest sense. How do you see the financial industry developing with all these regulations and new technological advancements in the future? Now that we will be more and more regulated, um, uh, that is for sure, that's a, that's a given. And I think technology will help us in order to do this in, an, in a good way uh, that doesn't have interference too much with our client interaction because the client is still coming first and we are overloading them already with regulatory requirements. If we can digitalize that and make it easier for the clients, that is the only thing we can do in order to uh, be kind of a beat with this kind of uh, regulatory environment. Interestingly, what we have seen in the past is that banks basically deliver everything from the balance sheet and the distribution and the operations and we see that splitting now. So it becomes much more efficient, it becomes more open. And you, you will see all kinds of partnerships, could be with merchants, uh, with um, uh, retail chains, uh, because customer acquisition costs are typically quite high. Banks already have made that cost and they could leverage much more um, um, uh, for their clients to, to make these partnerships. So I think banks will become kind of a trusted custodian of the customer's data. And if they partner up with their clients, they can actually deliver a lot of value to, 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 to end customers. Um, because there are not that many places uh, where you feel comfortable to, to share part of your life. Um, but if, as soon as they, they, they take out the conflict of interest that you have to buy their products, then the bank becomes a really trusted place. And banks have been the guardians of the customer's assets in the last 300 years. 
and we have criticized banks over the last decades, but still we do trust them in the end of the day. And my data is safe with them and probably more safe than with the big techs who actually make a business model of exploiting my data. So I would rather be with the bank that they protect my very valuable data and that they help me leveraging that data to get the best and the max out of my life. And I think if banks understand that, then you can come up with great propositions uh, with, based on modern technology that customers would love. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Fintech Show. Next time, we'll be taking a closer look at innovations in customer experience.